Hi, I'm Rob from B&H, and in this video, we're going to explore some inexpensive ways to improve the in-camera audio on single operator, run-and-gun style DSLR shoots. DSLR cameras have changed the way shooters capture video, but despite their excellent image quality, their audio capabilities are seriously limited. There are, however, some solutions to help you get better sound to the camera. Now, while your audio quality will be better with a dual system solution where you have a separate device for audio capture, that's not always possible for shooters working alone and moving quickly between locations. In this video, we'll look specifically at microphones you can mount right to the camera and plug directly directly into the camera's 8th inch external mic input. So let's look at a few camera mountable, battery powered shotgun microphones. A shotgun mic is so named because of the long barrel on the mic, which helps it reject off-axis sounds, focusing the sound capture field at the end of the barrel and lowering the sound coming from the sides. Now, Generally speaking, the longer the barrel, the more focused and directional the pickup pattern, allowing you to better eliminate unwanted ambient noise and capture more sound directly from your subject. While a camera mounted mic is generally too far away from your subject to get the most ideal recordings, it'll be far better than what you'll get with a poor quality omnidirectional built-in mic common to DSLRs that pick up sound from all directions equally. To give you an idea of just how poor the camera's built-in mic really is, I've removed my lav microphone and we're listening to the built-in mic on a Nikon D3200 and lo and behold it isn't very good, it's quite thin sounding. So let's start attaching some microphones to our camera and have a listen. We're starting with an inexpensive option for the budget conscious, the ECZ990 from Asden. Like the other models we're checking out, this mic mounts to your camera's shoe mount and gets power from a battery, in this case, a single AAA. Between the mic itself and the camera's mount is the shock mount, which is designed to absorb vibrations and reduce rumble and handling noise. The ECZ990 is a super cardioid microphone, meaning it has a focused on-axis pickup pattern and there's a switch on it so you can choose between a longer, more narrow pickup pattern, which we're using now, or a shorter, wider one. Either setting is going to allow you to focus your sound capture field on sources in front of the camera rather than from all around the camera, which is what you'd get from the camera's built-in mic. Okay, now I've swapped out the ECZ990 with a stereo microphone, the SMX10, also from Asden and in a similar price range. It's the same size as the 990, in fact, the same windscreen fits both models. The SMX10 also has a low cut filter to reduce vibration noise and low frequency rumbles. We actually have it engaged for this demo. Now both these Asden models offer an improvement over a DSLR's built-in microphone for a very low price, but as you can hear in our demos, the trade-off for that low price is a noticeable noise floor and some hiss in the sound. It's definitely present with the Nikon D3200, and it was even more audible with the Canon 5D Mark II and 60D when we tested it with those models. There are ways to reduce this noise in post, but we haven't done that because we want you to hear what the raw recordings sound like. Now let's mount some mics to a Canon 5D Mark II that cost a bit more, but also deliver better sound quality. Now we've hooked up the video mic from Rode, which also mounts directly on top of your camera via the shoe mount, runs on a 9 volt battery, and has an optional low cut filter. Inside the battery compartment are the 10 and 20 dB pad options, which you can engage when you're recording louder sources, but they are a bit difficult to get to. The shock mount is quite nice and uses these replaceable silicone bands to suspend the mic and reduce noise. The sound quality with the video mic is very good and it's still fairly inexpensive, making it a very popular microphone for DSLR video shooters. Okay, now we've upgraded a bit further and you're hearing me being recorded on the Rode VideoMic Pro. If you can spend a bit more money, the VideoMic Pro has been specifically created for DSLRs. It has a smaller form factor both for the mic itself and the shock mount, making it less obtrusive when mounted to the camera. The optional 10 dB pad is easier to get to and the VideoMic Pro also features a 20 dB boost option on the output, allowing you to lower the recording level on the camera's noisy preamp, yielding cleaner recordings. 
The next two mics we're going to listen to are the Stereo Video Mic and the Stereo Video Mic Pro, both from Rode. Both feature two mic capsules to deliver a stereo image. They're not shotgun mics, so there's no long barrel here to reduce off-axis sound. After all, we do want some stereo width. But nonetheless, the off-axis reduction is pretty reasonable. They both deliver very good sound, but for the DSLR shooter, I'd recommend spending a little more money for the Pro version since it's smaller, lighter, and features the plus 20 dB boost option for less hiss from the camera's preamp. Let's take them outside and have a listen. So we're back in the studio to take a look at another popular choice for on-camera microphones. You're listening to the MKE 400 shotgun mic from Sennheiser, a big player in the audio for video world. This is a very small supercardioid low bar pattern microphone with rugged all metal construction and it runs on a single AAA battery for up to 300 hours. There are high and low settings for the input level depending on the distance from your sound source and the sound quality is quite good. It can be a bit thinner sounding than some microphones, but that can actually be rather nice for certain applications, as dialogue and voiceovers can sound quite pleasing with the MKE 400 since they're in the mid-frequency range that it tends to emphasize. Now we've seen all these foam casings on the shotgun mics. Those are windscreens. If you're shooting outside, these are essential for cutting down wind noise. Now for even more wind reduction, you may need to employ a fluffy wind jammer, also known as a dead cat for reasons that should be fairly obvious. We used the Rode Dead Kitten when we shot outside with our Stereo Video Mic and Stereo Video Mic Pro. Also, as I mentioned earlier, if the mic has a low cut filter, engaging that will help cut down on wind noise and handling noise. So we've improved our microphone, but unfortunately our audio challenges with DSLR video don't end there. Many of these cameras have a feature called Automatic Gain Control, or AGC. The low-level signal from the microphone needs a preamp to bring up its volume, and AGC is supposed to help us by sensing the sound levels and automatically turning the camera's preamp up and down to compensate. In reality, though, the sudden changes in level can be quite obvious, and the preamp in the camera is of less than stellar quality, so when it gets turned up, the result is a lot of hissing noise in our quiet spots. Most newer DSLRs allow you to turn off the AGC and to set the audio levels manually, and older models often have firmware updates available to facilitate this, but if your camera doesn't allow you to disable the AGC, another option to consider is an audio adapter that has an AGC disabling function like the DS214 from Juiced Link. This small inexpensive solution solves a number of issues and is a good fit for the camera mountable mics that we looked at earlier with 3.5 millimeter outputs. The sturdy aluminum box mounts on your camera setup via the quarter 20 thread and is powered by a 9 volt battery. The DS214 has a stereo mini jack input that can accommodate a single stereo mic or two mono mics at once if you use an additional splitter cable sold separately like this one from Hosa. The preamps on the DS214 are much better than the ones built into the camera, so if you bring up the gain on these and turn the camera's preamps down, you'll get much cleaner audio with less noise. Note that if you're using the AGC disabling function on the DS214, you'll only be able to record in mono, but that's fine for mono on-camera shotguns. Now the reason you're limited to mono with the AGC disabling function engaged is because the DS214 outputs a noise signal to the right track only, which the camera detects and lowers its noisy preamps, allowing us to raise the levels on our much better sounding Juiced Link preamps and record to the clean left channel only. The right audio track with the noise is simply removed in post. Now this unit has another feature that really helps us out, and it's pretty basic, a headphone jack. We are finally seeing headphone jacks on newer models like the Nikon D800 and the Canon 5D Mark III, and hooray for that. 
Unfortunately though, older DSLRs don't have one, and that's not very convenient if you want to actually listen to the audio in the field. With the DS214, you'll only be able to hear the input to the camera, not the playback, which is less than ideal, but it's certainly an improvement over no headphone jack at all. I spent a little time talking about the Juice Link DS214 because it's a good, cost-effective way to integrate inexpensive camera-mountable mini jack microphones into your setup. Keep in mind, though, that there are a lot more options available to us in terms of improving our sound for DSLR videos. There's also a vast array of professional XLR microphones available to us, like this AT899 lav mic that I'm wearing now, as well as a vast array of shotgun mics that can be mounted to the camera, or even better, attached to a boom pole, which is then attached to a boom pole operator. Since they output to XLR connectors, though, and often require phantom power to operate, they're a great fit for portable audio recorders and field recorders. To use them for in-camera sound, we need to get an XLR adapter or mixer. But that's a bit beyond the scope of the simple, inexpensive run-and-gun solutions we're covering in this video, so we'll wrap it up here and explore some of those options down the road. I'm Rob from B&H, and thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.